Good morning, you four. This is Tuesday's English lesson today, where we're going to continue reading the next part, The Horned Helmet. Just before we start listening to the rest of the chapter from yesterday, um, it's going to be a really good idea to just recap what we found out yesterday. So right at the end of yesterday's lesson, we read the beginning of chapter seven, Greta's Venture. And we found out quite a lot about Starcad, didn't we? He's opening up a lot more now. Can you remember what we found out about Starcad? Yeah, that's right. He was telling Bjorn a bit more about his family life, wasn't he? We found out that he had a wife and he had a son as well in the past. Um, and unfortunately, they became ill and they died. So that was why Stark had chose the sea rover lifestyle. OK, and that's why he chose to become a Viking that traveled the seas. And um, as we read today, um, you're going to listen to the next part of Chapter 7, Greta's Venture. And I want you to really focus on what Stark had is saying about his sword okay I want you to think back when they did the raid of the village of Briar a few chapters ago um, when Starkad was in bear sark mode and we know his his precious sword what he called leg biter had been damaged during the raids okay and I want you to really listen carefully to the rest of the chapter now to find out exactly what Starkad is planning to happen okay so pause now and read chapter seven over on YouTube and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed chapter seven. So we know from listening to that chapter then, that sword that we've just talked about for Starcad has become quite an important, um, something, something important for him. And we know that he wants another sword because his sword was damaged during the last raids that he took part in. He wants a sword. And he was hearing the story that Bjorn was telling him about his, his experiences in Iceland. And he was telling, Bjorn was telling Starkad that there was a king that he knew of in Iceland, that when he had died, all of his precious possessions were buried with him. And that's one of the important things that we need to learn from this story, that that is exactly what happened. Um, in those days, when somebody quite important died, they would be buried and alongside them would be their precious possessions. Okay, things like their swords or their shields or anything that belonged to them. Okay, so because Bjorn has told Starkad that, that has put an idea into Starkad's head, hasn't it? And he's decided he wants a new sword. So, how do we think that he's planning to get one? Yes, you're right. He wants to dig up somebody's grave, a king's grave perhaps, and find himself a new sword. He wants to rob a grave. And get his own weapon. Now Bjorn and Gork and some of the other Vikings have tried to warn him off this and say it's probably not a good idea. The best thing you could do is just get somebody to make you a new sword, okay, or perhaps buy a new sword. But can you remember the reason why Starkad chose not that, not to do that? Yeah, you're right. He says, well, buying a sword or having somebody make me a new one means it's boring. It doesn't come with a story. Whereas I know if I can get a sword from a grave, that's going to be so much more exciting and that sword will have its own story to tell. OK, that's going to become the focus of our lesson today. OK, and today we're going to be focusing on Kennings. You can see that in our ICANN here. Kennings. Now, we've come across Kennings before. I want you to think back when we did our Beowulf unit um, last half term in school. We were thinking about the, the term Kennings and we know that Kennings are phrases that are popular to be used in poetry so you can see i've got the definition here it says kennings are often used in poetry for effect and a kenning is the process of using a two-word phrase in place of a one-word noun so we could describe it as a sword or we could put two words in its place instead of using its name. And that's exactly what we did in Beowulf, wasn't it? In fact, if we go back, that's exactly what Starkad has done here. We can see the fact that his old sword that was broken, that was called a leg biter, that's a brilliant example of a kenning because instead of calling his sword a sword, he's given it a name, which is two words that describes its job, leg biter. OK, I can imagine exactly what he uses that sword for on people's legs. OK, while he's doing those raids. So 
if we're going to be focusing on kennings today i want us to look quite closely at that song that we've just heard in chapter seven okay this was the song that stark had said now i'm sure while you were reading that you were thinking what is he saying what does he even mean so we're going to unpick that together because it's spoken in a lot of old english okay so it's really important that we understand exactly what he was singing to bjorn so he said makers of widows wonder we must that means when you're a maker of a widow a widow is somebody who who's lost their husband or their wife or a family member, okay? So he's saying as Vikings, that's what they do. They make people widows because they can kill other people. They can kill people's husbands. They will kill people's family members. Um, and they're saying, wander we must, we must travel the world, okay? And it says here, killers twixt sea time. Now, twixt is an old English word. I've put the definition here for you. Twixt is an old English word, which means in between. So he says he will kill in between seed time. So that's in, in the time of year when crops are growing. OK, they haven't got the farming to do. They're waiting for the crops to grow. So they're going to go and raid and they're going to go and kill people. And sailing of kine. Now, kine is another word that means cows or cattle. OK, so when they're not trading, when they're not using their trading ships and sailing and trading their cows, they'll do this job instead. They'll be they'll be fighters. OK, walk in the whale's way, sailing the swan's path. I wonder if you can notice any kennings in, the, in that line of his song there. Now, remember, kennings are two words that describe something instead of using its name. Yeah, you're correct. Let's highlight those together so I can see walk in the whale's way. What do you think a whale's way might be? We know that it's definitely a kenning because it's two words to describe something and it's used in place of its name. Walk in the whale's way. Yeah, you're right. That's the Vikings way of describing the sea. OK, so he's saying they're walking or sailing on the sea and sailing the swan's path. There's another example there of a kenning. And we know what he's referring to there is traveling across rivers as well, okay? So traveling across the sea and sailing up and down rivers, daring the sun's track, okay? And again, sun's track is another example of a kenning, and he means sky, okay? The pathway that the sun takes, and we know that they used the sun to guide them, okay? So knew which way they were going. So daring the sun's track, tricking dark death, okay? So they're tricking people and creating death as they travel. He then says, in the jaws of the storm, jesting we stand. So even if what he means by that is even if there is a storm, jesting means joking okay it doesn't bother them okay so jesting we stand even on their ships if there is a storm and there's terrible weather they still stand strong okay lashed with hail's fury i wonder what hail's fury what do they mean by that again another example of a kenning we know that he's referring to the rain there okay when they when it's terrible weather lashed with hail's fury hands frozen to line so they have a really tricky journey on their ships but they still keep going even frozen in the storm numb head rain shaken sharp spume in the nostril and again i popped that definition there to show you that spume means the froth or foam that comes up from the sea okay so they'll still continue their journeys okay salt cake in hair and again, I've popped there, the word caking means covered. So their, their hair is covered in the salt water from the sea as they travel on through the treacherous waves and blood's haven in sight. So again, another example of a kenning there. And what they mean by blood's haven is the place, the wonderful, a haven is a wonderful place that they want to go to. And for them, that's the next village that they're going to raid. OK, so Stark had a sung, sung a song to Bjorn using those examples of kennings to describe his life on the sea. And we can see from his song, that he really quite enjoys it. OK, he likes the thrill of raiding in between different times of year and traveling in all of that stormy weather. He feels that that shows just how strong he is. OK.
So today we're going to be focusing on those kennings. And as we found out in the last part of that chapter that we've read, we know that Starcad wants to find a sword. OK, so we're going to come up with some ideas. And again, we're going to refer to our previous learning where we've done this before, where we could think about what could Starcad call his new sword? We know his last sword was called a leg biter, an example of a kenning. If he does dig up a grave and he does find a new sword, I wonder what he could call this one. OK, I wonder if you've got any ideas. I want to share some of my ideas with you. So if he has um, a sword that he's going to use, he might call it a body slicer. OK, and again, rather than calling it a sword, two words that describe what it could do. OK, a body slicer, a skin cutter. Okay, we could get really quite gruesome here, couldn't we, with some of our word choices. I wonder what ideas you might have. Perhaps maybe a head basher, okay, using something to bash somebody on the head with, perhaps. Okay. So now that we've come up with those three ideas together, I'm sure you have some many more, much more creative ideas than me. I know how gruesome you can all be. That's going to be your task for today. I want you to design a sword that you think Starcad might be able to find if he does dig up a king's grave. OK, and I want you to draw it today. So a plain piece of paper is all that you'll need to do this task. And I want you to just draw one sword that you think will tell a story that Starcad is going to be interested in. OK, I pop some pictures here so you can see the detail. So it might be rather than just being a plain sword, there might be a really detailed handle, perhaps, that he's going to be interested in. OK, it might be that it's got some really delicate details here. OK, and think about exactly what materials it might be made of as well. So first of all, I want you to draw the sword that you think Starcad is going to find that's going to be interesting enough to tell the story that he's looking for. OK, once you've drawn that, I then want you to come up with a load of different names that you think Starcad could use to describe that sword. OK, you can use my three that we've come up with already. We'll go back to those. You can use my three as a starting point if that will help you. But I want to see lots and lots of different ideas that I want you to write all around your drawing of different kennings that you think would des describe the sword that you think Starcad is going to find. OK, that's it for today. Can't wait to see your drawings. Take care. See you tomorrow.